Today, we are taking most of our history learning from documentary television shows. We watch Military Channel and History Channel and whatever you watch, black and white and reenactments. And that is where most people nowadays get their history uh, education from. The fewest people nowadays actually pick up books, read them, or even better, go to museums, or yet better, go to the archives and look at what happened, what was said, what was done, and why, and by whom. We take our history education from documentaries. Now, I've set out to do another documentary series, and you ask yourself why there are so many, and especially covering the Second World War, which has been talked about to no end, and written about to no end. The problem we're having is that most of the documentaries, like most of the books, are generally correct, but specifically wrong. There are so many flaws or mistakes or misquotes in most of what you see on TV. Just like when you watch movies, movies nowadays are made to rewrite history into what we would like it to be or how we would like to remember it, put inside a neat little box that's all sewn up, and this is how it was, and this is what happened. That stifles us from exploring more, asking questions, because history is not set in stone, especially today when we continue to rewrite history based on our present perception of the world. This is sad, and it is really dangerous, because when we rewrite history, we also alter the foundation the future is built on. And when it comes to for something like World War II, that is still, for some people, in living memory. It is frustrating for the historians like myself to watch a documentary where you hear the narrator go over something that is wrong. You get wrong factual information. They use the wrong, um, wrong black and white documentary footage. Uh, the past week, I've seen a documentary where the Himmler had no mustache and uh, Goebbels took poison, and so many other things. There are small, minute details that most of the filmmakers are not aware. Most of the networks are not aware. So it doesn't matter if it's this or that, but it does matter. Especially when it comes to some of the controversial points of World War II, it matters to get the details right. For instance, some years ago, the Russians released all the deaths books of Auschwitz. Isn't that a fascinating topic of study? Yet most people, they don't know. And we cannot continue to rely on our history based on what was said and done during the war, where some of it was propaganda and on every side, and it certainly has a place if it'll stop the fighting or save lives, propaganda is aces. But after the conflict is over, it's up to the historians to try to decipher what really happened or who did what, who gave the orders. And for that, we need to go into the archives. We need to look at the witnesses who was there. We can't really rely on the um, memoirs because many times they were slightly changed uh, for various reasons. You need to look at the diaries written at the time, at the documents, and so few historians go to the archives, go to the personal letters, uh, talk to the people who were there, or read the eyewitness accounts. And that's what we need to base our, our documentaries on. Not only do we need to get the black and white footage, the stock footage that we fill our documentary with, right, when you talk about the Operation Barbarossa, and then you have pictures of uh, France and the French invasion. It gives the viewer a wrong image even if it's just a small one that wouldn't alter the, the overall perception of the war, he still has, as a historian who makes documentaries, we need to get it right. Because so many people who watch documentaries specifically take their learning and their knowledge from that documentary. Because many people don't have the opportunity to go to the places where it happened. They don't have the opportunity to go to the archives. You can research the Internet. But for those who make television, we need to take the time to do it correctly. We need to go to the places, talk to the people. And we need to go to see the armor, to sit in it, to get a feeling for, they did this. This is the hardship they endured on all fronts. How did they do that?
if history says this is one thing, they did this in this vehicle, and you go sit in the vehicle and you realize this is not possible. Well, you need to try. You need to get it right. Because we are not making documentaries to shape history. We are making documentaries to present history as accurately as we can to give a new generation a vision of the history that is also interesting and presented in a slightly more fast-paced and upbeat way. Because today, most young people may not be as interested in history as we would like or maybe as we were. They certainly don't want to watch black-and-white documentaries with a boring narrator talking about what happened. They want to see something a little bit more fast-paced, and we can do that. I want to go to the places where it happened. I want to talk to the people who were there, read the archives, get the documentation correct, and then reenact that event to show you this is what these people went through in this place at that time. This is the horrors they saw. These are the battles. These are the places the battles were fought. Look at the scale. Look at the fortifications, the bunkers, the scale. You talk about the invasion of Russia, as the Germans did back then. Most people have no concept. The only point of reference is how fast did it take us to get from Kuwait to Baghdad? The scale in Russia was enormous. The ferocity of the fighting was the most violent ever. It was beyond imagination. It needs to be documented more. Where most Western historians have been more interested in telling the British side of the story, the French side of the story, the American side of the story, to understand how things happened and where we went awry, we need to understand the German side of the story, certainly, because it is said history will repeat itself if we ignore it, neglect it, or rewrite it. And today we are doing a great job rewriting history to fit current events. It is sad, it is incredibly dangerous, and it's disrespectful to those troops who fought honorably for their countries, for their side, as it is in some civil wars. Not everyone was bad. Not every German was a Nazi. Not every Russian was a communist. Not uh, every British bomber did uh, bomb Dresden. There are multifacets to that war. And we need to remember and talk about the facts, the documentation, the proof of what happened during that war and how and why. Because today, so many world events are still influenced by what happened during World War II, how the war began with World War I and how it ended and what that has brought us till today. Israel was created as a result of World War II. Had World War II not happened, Israel may not have been a country. That is a a fact that most people don't think about. That is one of the products. The entire European map was redrawn after World War I and redrawn again after World War II and only started to dissolve and come back to what it was after the downfall of the Soviet Union. And every year there are documents being released in archives all over the world that needs to be examined and read. And if I can do a documentary, that will get you interested in this topic. Interested enough that you will go to the archives when you see them, go to the libraries, do the research online, and remember one thing that you need to remember today that is beyond important, is to examine all sides of a story. When you watch the news, you have several sides of a story. You don't want to hear the other side. When you read history, well, you want to read your side. You don't want to hear those, their side. We need, as human beings, to open our mind and examine every side of a story. Because there's always more than one. And there's always more sides of the story than the one you're told. So as a historian, I need to bring you facts. This is what I know happened because this is as far as my research has taken me into this event and that should open you up to do research of your own and if you then come up with documentation that what i have found is wrong awesome now we can get to the facts of what happened and what people did and how they lived and that will be amazing because hopefully one day in my lifetime we'll be able to do the correct 
history of World War II, the events that led up to it, and the events that happened after it, what they've caused, how they happened, so we can examine them and try not to let them influence our society today in a negative way, as is occurring in some places. Plus, we need to honor the veterans who fought that great war honorably. And I say honorably because they were good and bad on every side. That is a fact of war that we are trying to neglect today. That was a generation that endured greater hardship than we probably could today. And they worked hard, they fought, they killed, they lived, and some of them did not make it home. And we should respect them and honor them by telling their story for the generation that comes after mine. Because you need to know, and your kids need to know. History is fascinating, and it should not lead to new wars or arguments or disputes. It should lead to communication, exchange of ideas, exchange of historical knowledge. So we can move on knowing what foundation we stand on. So when you see documentaries and you read history books, remember some of the history books are written by people based on another book, based on another book, based on another book. But hopefully one of those historians actually went to the archives, pulled out the files, and said, well, oh yes, that's wrong or that's right. Study history. Listen to all sides. Make up your own mind. But make up your mind based on information. To do that, look at the documentaries, read the books, and then ask questions. And think for yourself, what would I like to study? Are you sure this happened like that? I'm not sure. I want to know more. And then draw the parallels and see what happened then, what's happening now. How did that, those two affect one another? History is a fascinating topic. It should not be cause for fighting or arguing. It should be cause for people to come together and study and learn and pass on knowledge. That's what we're here for. Good luck.